is my uh, workspace, craft table, my everything creative zone. This is where I do all of my different artwork kind of things. Um, we don't usually like to talk about this side of the desk, but this is what you've come to see. This is where I keep all of my Copic markers. Um, I've modeled this after, um, you have, may have seen it before on um, Bailey J's blog. Um, a couple other artists have done something similar like this where it's just the uh, foam poster board stuff that um, you cut up and slice and then attach. I have hot glued mine and it's working very well. It looks a little bit on the um, ghetto side in places, but uh, it is quite sturdy and I think it's going to hold up for a while. At, at any rate, um, these are obviously all my Copics. There are a few pro markers in here. I recently got some of those to give them a try and um, do a little something for their competition they were doing. And so um, I've got uh, grays, my Cools Neutrals, black and colorless blender, warm grays, all of my earth tones up here, which I currently have organized, um, divided light, medium, dark. I do it numerically um, so that it's easier for me to find when I know what I'm looking for. Um, so everything here runs from um, uh, E blank zero through um, E blank three. These are E blank four through E blank six, which six apparently doesn't exist in the E family. E blank seven through E blank nine. So all of the nice dark ones are over here. Reds, yellow reds, yellow, yellow green, green, blue green, which um, when I went to start purchasing Copic markers, this is what informed me that I uh, have a new favorite color. Um, I didn't realize that I had fallen in love with blue green as I had, but blue greens are currently my biggest family after reds and earth tones. Um, then I have blues, blue violets, violets, and red violets. Uh, these guys here are sitting out because, um, as you can see, I've done some little, uh, little labels on all of the markers that don't have them. These are all chows, so they do not have labels on their end caps, but I pop these out and glued them on. I can link to uh, the blog where someone has done this already. Um, and these guys, when I went to do it, I messed up their labels, and so they're sitting out waiting for their labels. Um, but they will be a part of our video today. And um, my other major tools that I use, um, aside from actually like pen, ink, and so forth, um, is going to be the Sa Sandy Alnock Hex chart, which I recommend. Um, I actually recommend that you get this before you even think about buying Copics. Um, because not only is it good organization as you fill in and, and figure out what you're doing and stuff, when you purchase it, it comes with a PDF of both this blank, where you fill in everything that you get, and then one that she has filled in and scanned in. And what's great about that is it lets you see what colors are really, really similar. And so, for instance, I didn't have this when I first started, and these three yellows are really close. Uh, I might not have opted to get these exact yellows if I had realized just how close they are. And kind of sa same a little bit here. Um, but that's something that it's kind of a live and learn. I will share that with you. Go ahead and take a look at um, a chart that has all of the colors together so you can do a comparison between the colors. Because looking at one scan versus another scan of different colors and things is not very helpful. But getting a comparison between the values um, as they exist in one image is really very helpful. And uh, that was one thing that I just uh, really found very helpful as I started expanding my collection. So I've got that as the separate section for the grays. It is totally worth the, uh, I think it's six bucks to buy that. This guy I found um, online, I want to say that Copic actually provides this. This actually provides the reverse service of this guy. This guy, if you're looking for the right shade of something, the right color of something, you can figure out, oh, this is the color I'm looking for, and then go to your collection and grab that color, which is really helpful in that way. But if, for instance, you're trying to figure out, oh, what color is this marker that I have in my hand? And so I can pull out, for instance, I can look, and instead of wasting um, my ink by doing all kinds of tests and things on separate pieces of paper. Why is that? There we go. 
I can go YR68. Where is YR68? And I go over here to my YR chart and find all the way down here. There we go, 68. This is what YR68 looks like, and that's very helpful. Um, it's just a, a different search mechanism from this chart. This one's fun. This is also provided by Sandy Alnock, but um, at least at the time that I got it, this was a um, free download on her website. And so I picked it up, and it's kind of fun. It helps me mentally break out of uh, some of what I think of for skin tones. Um, it helps me realize, oh, well, I can blend things that are a little bit more drastically different. I can include violets and reddish colors and things like that. Um, it's just a really good tool to help you kind of picture that a little bit. So I like this and I recommend that as well. This is what we're going to be doing today. I uh, kind of figured it out ahead of time, but we're going to go through so that you can actually see the colors together. Um, and I'm going to walk through um, all of the colors, the different families, and understanding um, which ones blend together and all of that. On the actual tour, I just kind of want to give a little bit of an understanding of um, the naming scheme, the naming pattern that they use for, um, for Copic markers. Um, this is semi-helpful. This comes on their, um, their little chart. Um, but some of it I see, think seems a little bit misleading, and I just kind of want to explain um, how this naming system works and uh, how you can understand that better. Um, the first part of each name is a letter, and then it's followed by at least two numbers. Um, the first part is fairly self-explanatory. These are your rainbow names. Um, you got uh, red, yellow, red, which is orange, yellow, yellow, green, you know, so on and so forth. Um, the letters are fairly self-explanatory except for E. E is earth, earth tones, so your browns. Um, but everything else is pretty simple and straightforward. That one's easy to get. Um, the numbers are where things get a little confusing for some people. Um, the numbers are not necessarily, this is not intended to be a whole number. It's not intended to be five. It's zero, five. Um, there are two separate values that express different things. So the first digit that you get to, they label it as the blending group within the color family, and it says refers to saturation. I don't think saturation is quite the right word. I think hue is the right word, because, for instance, within the yellow, within the blue-green family, um, this will indicate different hues within the blue-green family, and so you'll have grayish blue-greens. You'll have uh, more green blue greens you'll have more blue blue greens um, you'll have almost white blue green and so it's just kind of um, a way to differentiate between those blending groups between uh, the different color families within the big color family um, it's all those little bit variations that you need to kind of have a, a really good broad spectrum of color um, is to have those different values, those different families, the different hues within a color. Um, then you have the second color, uh, second number rather, which indicates the specific value and refers to intensity. It says that one is pretty accurate. Intensity being light versus dark. You have uh, zero being the lightest all the way down deep into the darkness of uh, nines, uh, which is, uh, you know, you get different colors within that family. You'll get um, you know, ignoring this first section over here, um, you get the zeros he where this five is. If you get zeros, you're going to have very pale colors. You get ones, it's going to be a little darker. Um, five is going to be a mid-tone within that family, but it's not an absolute value of intensity. Um, a zero in a something that has a um, one here is going to be different in, in, in darkness or lightness from a zero here with something that has um, a two or a three here, just depending on the family it's in. And I'll kind of get into that um, to kind of explain a little bit more later when we're actually working with the colors. 